For more on this, to help us make sense of what is going on, I'm joined by Malcolm Cook. He was the founding director of the East Asia program at the Lowy Institute. He's now the dean of the School of International Studies at Flinders University in South Australia. Malcolm Cook, good to speak with you again. Uh, hello. Now, rhetoric, it's become a generational thing, it seems, out of Pyongyang. So are we just listening to more words here from uh, Kim Jong-un, or do you think these threats have some substance to them. I think the fact that the vitriol is getting stronger and the kind of rapidity is getting quicker shows either there's instability in North Korea or the North Koreans are pushing very hard to get direct talks with the United States which they've always wanted and have largely failed to achieve. And with the South Korean uh, leader warning uh, that Seoul has preemptive strike plans in place, should there be any sign from the north of an imminent attack, how likely is it that that could well raise the stakes or could it have a cooling effect in Pyongyang? Uh, Pyongyang is very hard to read as our foreign minister noted earlier today <laughs> but in 2010 South Korea absorbed the loss of a naval ship sunk by the North Koreans and then later the shelling of an island that killed some civilians so I think South Korea has reached its level of tolerance for accepting deaths caused by North Korea. So their reaction, while new, is not surprising. With, with your reading there at the start, Malcolm, where you said it may well be outwardly focused or Pyongyang might be trying to deal with something internal about leadership stability, are there uh, signs, is there a sense that the young and still relatively new leader is dealing with some sort of instability? Uh, I think the timing shows us that it might be domestic factors driving North Korea. We've had a recent change of government in South Korea towards a government that was promising to take, call it a softer line than the predecessor towards North Korea. And now that's obviously being made impossible by North Korea's uh, belligerence. So that would suggest that the uh, language coming out of North Korea, these heightened threats may have more to do with domestic politics that, to be honest, the Western world knows very, very little about, and now China probably doesn't know very much either, as it's being isolated as well. Let's presume the outward focus of Pyongyang again. Uh, and, of course, we're having to do a lot of presumption when we're talking about uh, Pyongyang. <laughs> but uh, with North Korea having made a few, quite a few threats in the past week, including towards American installations in the Pacific, how much does that put Australia potentially in Pyongyang's sights? Uh, certainly now it looks like they've had, from their last missile tests, have the theoretical capability of striking both the U.S. Uh, West Coast and, and by that uh, measure, Australia. However, if we assume that North Korea is a rational actor, consult less with Beijing and take actions that are more against Beijing's uh, interests. So Beijing may be more receptive towards uh, requests for it to change its behavior towards North Korea than before. And Malcolm, uh, Foreign Minister Carr has also raised the possibility of Australia imposing further sanctions of its own. What forms could they take and how effective potentially could they well be? If you visit the DFAT website, it notes that Australia has negligible trade and investment relations with North Korea and already a very wide-ranging uh, array of sanctions that go well beyond the United Nations Security Council ones. So I don't think Australia really has too much more uh, water it can squeeze out of that rock, so to speak. And what of America? It's making its presence viewed, if not felt, even greater at the present time, including with the uh, sending in of these two stealth aircraft military exercises. What will be the likely role of the Americans on the peninsula in the short term? I think what they're doing is reassuring both their South Korean ally of their continued support and the wider region of their continued interest and commitment to Asia Pacific, which Australia will be following carefully. Under the Obama administration, they've been quite firm that they won't engage in bilateral talks with North Korea until North Korea changes its behavior in a positive way. Uh, and North Korea is trying to up the stakes in that bet. Uh, hopefully Washington will stay firm and not uh, offer North Korea a positive outcome to its bad behavior. How, how confident are you that the talking will continue rather than action and moods will quell and quieten down? 
again, the rhetoric is certainly, as you noted, hotter and, and more frequent out of Pyongyang, but uh, we've had decades of this type of uh, bellicose uh, threats from North Korea without any action. So I guess it's good to be more alert but not more alarmed. Malcolm Cook at Flinders University, as always, thanks very much for sharing your knowledge. Well, the British government